अभी भी जाग रही हो क्या बात है नींद नहीं आ रही कोई टेंशन है नहीं तो फिर जागे क्यों हैड अ लॉन्ग डे आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड कोई बात नहीं अब मैं जो आ गई हूँ Good and tight sleep. Don't worry. Or आज एक नए तरीके से, you know, जब हम लोग छोटे होते थे, तब दादी नानी हमको कहानियाँ पढ़ के सुनाती थी, या फिर बोलती थी, correct? हाँ, तुम्हारी दादी या नानी ने भी सुनाई होंगी, है ना? आज हम ऐसे ही एक स्टोरी बुक आपको रीड करके सुनाएंगे अच्छा है ना ओके तो अभी आपको जो करना है आपको बेड पर लेट जाना है ओके वेयर समथिंग रिलैक्स्ड लूज क्लोथ्स प्रेफरेबली मेड ऑफ कॉटन एंड अगर चाहो तो आप पानी भी पी सकते हैं और आई वांट योर माइंड टू बी कंप्लीटली रिलैक्स्ड एंड इम्प्टी और आपको एक छोटी बच्ची जैसे वेव करना है है ना क्योंकि आज स्टोरी नाइट है ओके चलो तो फिर मैं आपको थोड़ा सा पानी पिला दूँ ओके वेट Very good. I'll bring the book very fast. In fact, it is with me. Do you want to see which book I'm going to read for you tonight? Well, I'll show you right away. This is the book I'm going to read for you tonight. This reads Grandma's Bag of Stories. Can you see? Yeah. I know you like grandma stories. तुम्हारी दादी नानी भी पढ़ा करती हैं ना तुम्हारे लिए? Yes. तो आज मैं तुम्हारे लिए करूँगी as a friend. Okay. चल तो start करते हैं. So first, I would like to smell this book. You know. न्यू बुक का स्मेल मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है तो मैं अच्छा लगता है यस So, do you have any idea about the writer, Sudhamurthy? Yes, mm, I would like to tell you something about her first. Okay, uh, Sudhamurthy was born in 1950 in Shikon in North Karnataka. She did her MTech in Computer Science and is now the chairperson of Infosys Foundation. A prolific writer in English and Kannada, she has written novels, technical books, travelogues, collections of short stories and non-fictional pieces, and four books for children. Her books have been translated into all the major Indian languages. 
Sudha Murthy is the recipient of R.K. Narayanan Award for Literature and the Padma Shri in 2006. So she's an excellent writer and indeed a very renowned and famous person. She's a star lady, I should say. Okay, so the beginning of the stories, there are a couple of stories here. Um, maybe uh, 15 20 stories uh, but the preface i would like to read first uh, it's not a preface it's the beginning of the story like it starts like this summer holidays Achi smiled to herself as she waited for two more of her grandchildren to arrive raghu and minu would be here soon anand and krishna had already arrived with their mother the previous evening they had been waiting restlessly for their cousins to arrive ever since. Even though Aji told them Raghu and Minu would be here the next morning, these two kids just wouldn't listen. They went to the railway station with their grandfather Aja to receive them. The train must have pulled into the tiny railway station of Shikong by now and their grandfather would have hired a taxi to bring them home along with the mother and the stacks of luggages. Going to the next page, Anji hurried through her bath. She had finished cooking their favorite dishes and now wearing a nice soft cotton sari before going to the veranda to wait for them. There, there they came. What a noise the children were, were making. They all nearly tumbled out of the car and came leaping and shouting to her, each wanting to be the first to be hugged by her. Each one wanted to be closer to Achi. Soon the children settled down. A visit to Achi and Acha's house meant first inspecting the garden to see how much the plants had grown since they last came. Then they went to check on the cows, cubs, dog, pups, cats and kittens. Then they all ate huge quantities of Achi's delicious food. Finally, while their mothers went off to chat and rest, the children gathered around their grandmother for the best part of the holidays, listening to her wonderful stories, particularly in the late afternoon. Let us too gather under the first revolving fan on a mat on the floor, fighting to be nearest to her and listen in. Okay. So here the first story starts, okay? The first story is Doctor, Doctor. The first day, children asked Aji, how do you know so many stories? Aji smiled and answered, my grandmother told me many stories. Some I read in books, a few I learned from youngsters like you and the rest from your Acha. Then Aji paused and said, I see all of you have grown a lot since the last time I saw you. So before I start telling any stories, I want to know what each of you want to be when you grow up. Raku, who was 11 years old and the oldest of all, said immediately, I want to be an environment scientist. Minu, who was 9, said I have not decided to be a computer person like my dad. Anand, who was 10, said, I want to be an astronaut. And his twin sister Krishna firmly said, I want to become a for fashion designer. Aji smiled. I am glad all of you have thought about this. We should always have some aim in life which we must try to achieve while being of help to others. Now, let me tell you a story of a person who learned just such a lesson. Shall we too join Achi and her gang of youngsters and listen to the story? Yeah, of course. Okay, so. On a blazing hot summer afternoon, an old man came walking down a narrow village path. 
He was tired and thirsty. Right by the road, he spotted a tiny grocery store. It had a tin roof and mud walls. The shopkeeper sat inside, fanning himself and shooing away the flies that were buzzing around in the stifling heat. There was a little bench in front of the store where the villagers met when evening came and the land had cooled down. The old man flopped down on the bench. He was so tired that for a while he could not speak. Finally, he opened his mouth and uttered one word, water. Now, this village had been facing a horrible problem for a long time. It was near a great desert and the rains came only once a year to fill its ponds and wells. But the rains had disappeared for the last two years and the villagers had been making do with water from a faraway stream. Every morning groups of men and women walked a long distance, filled their pots from the little stream and used that the whole day. Naturally, no one wanted to waste even a drop of his precious water. Yet, how do you say no to a thirsty, tired old man when he asks for some water? Without a second thought, the shopkeeper, Ravi, who was very kind-hearted, poured out a tumbler of water from his pot and gave it to the old man. The old man drank it up greedily. Then he said, one more word, more. And without waiting for Ravi to give it to him, he lunged for the pot, picked it up and lifting it to his lips, drank up Ravi's entire day's supply of water. Poor Ravi, what could he do? He just stared in dismay. Then he told himself, never mind, after all, I did help someone in need. The stranger, meanwhile, now seemed to feel better. He handed the pot back to Ravi, gave a smile and filled Ravi's heart with warmth and said, My son, always be kind like this. Help everyone who comes to you like you helped me and you will be blessed. Then he picked up his stick and slowly hobbled down the road. Ravi watched the stranger man disappear into the distance then returned to his shop. The afternoon heat grew worse. After a while, Ravi felt his head was about to burst with a headache. His lips were parched and his throat hurt. It was so dry. He really needed a drink of water. But the visitor had finished it all up. Hoping to coax a drop or two out of the pot, Ravi lifted it to his lips and tilted it. Imagine his surprise when a gush of water ran down his face. It was sweet, refreshing water which not only quenched his thirst but wiped out his headache too. Ravi was staring at the water pot trying to figure out what had just happened when Karim limped into his shop. Karim was a young boy who had hurt his leg in an accident many years ago which had left him with a limp. When he was unwell, or tired, his limp became worse. Karim too flopped down on the bench in front of the store and caught his breath like the old man. Then he fished out a shopping list from his pocket and handed it to Ravi. As Ravi started packing up the items listed on the paper, Karim opened a little bundle of food and ate his lunch sitting on the bench. Finally, he wiped his mouth on his scarf and pointed to Ravi's pot of water. Mind if I take a little sip? It is too hot after all. Ravi was busy measuring out some dal. He said without looking up, I would be happy to offer you some but Simon's already had most of it. Then I was feeling unwell and I think I finished the last of it. What are you saying my friend? I can clearly see the pot brimming over with water. Ravi looked up and stared in disbelief. In front of his eyes, Karim poured out a tumbler full of water and drank it. Then he paid for all his groceries and left the store. Did his limp look as if it was nearly gone? Ravi watched him for a while, trying to figure out, then decided the heat was playing tricks on his mind and went back into the cool comfort of his shop and dozed off. He awoke with a start as someone was calling his name urgently. 
He opened his eyes to find Karim back. This time he was holding by the hand his little sister Fatima. Brother, wake up. We need your help. Karim urged. Oh, what? Is something wrong? Fatima is burning up with fever. Then go to a doctor. Why have you got her to a grocery shop? Karim stared at him and said, You mean you don't know how you just helped me? My leg, which has been troubling me for the last many years, healed up on its own as soon as I drank the water from your magic pitcher. Give Fatima a drink from it too. I'm sure her fever will disappear in no time. Ravi was astonished. Magic pitcher? Healing water? What was Karim going on about? Nonetheless, he passed the pot to Fatima. She drank a bit, then sat down to rest. Within minutes, she lifted her head and said, It is true, brother. I am indeed cured of the fever. Soon the news spread in the village like wildfire. Ravi, the quiet, kind grocery shopkeeper, was now the owner of a magic pitcher, the waters from which could heal anyone of any disease. Every night Ravi left the pitcher in the store and in the morning it would be filled to the brim with sweet cool water. Daily a queue of sick people and their relatives collected in front of his shop. To each one Ravi gave a drink of the water and they went away saying they were now better. The pot was never empty. Ravi realized the old man he had helped must have been given his gift in gratitude. Ravi understood what a great gift it was and thanked him daily in his mind. Soon his little store turned into a hospital. Ravi did not charge a paisa for the water. People would leave some money, some gifts for him and others did not pay him anything. But he was still happy with that. One day a rich landlord servant appeared at his doorstep and said, My master is unwell. Come with me and give him a drink of your water. Ravi replied, See the crowd of people behind you waiting for their turn. How can I live without helping them and go to your master? Do you think these sick people can stand in the sun for long? Tell your master to come to me instead and I will give him the water here. The servant said, Ravi, what will you get by helping these poor people? A few rupees, some rice and dal, come to my master's house. He will shower you with money and gifts. Your worries about making and smit will over for at least a month. Ravi was tempted. It was true. Why not cure one rich man and get some help in buying his daily needs? Ravi told the poor people waiting outside to come back the next day and went with the servant to the landlord. Slowly in this way Ravi changed. Why, once he could not bear to see the pain and sadness of the sick and poor people, he now started each day hoping he would get one rich patient at least who would pay him handsomely. Days passed thus, season changed and it was summer once more. Ravi was in his old store writing up his accounts when the voice of an old man quivered in his ear. Son, water. Startled, he looked up. Was it the same old man who had given him the gift of the magic picture? But right behind the visitor was none other than the king's messenger. Come quickly, the messenger shouted. The queen has been bitten by a mosquito. Water, the old man repeated. The queen is unwell, the messenger shouted again. Ravi looked from one to the other. One was a grubby old man who may or may not be the same person who gave him the picture. On the other side, a messenger from the king himself. He pictured the gold coins showering down on him once his healing water shoe the queen's mosquito bite. The choice was clear. He picked up his picture and said to the stranger, Wait right here, uncle. I'll be back soon. The king's swift-footed horses took him to the palace. There he rushed to the queen, who was staring in dismay at the mosquito bites. He tilted the pitcher to pour some water into a tumbler, but nothing came. Again and again he tilted the pitcher. He turned it upside down and stared into its depth. It was dry as a bone. You cheat, the king roared. So this is how you have been fooling the people of my kingdom. 
get out and never let me hear that you have acquired magical healing powers. If you claim such a thing again, I will banish you forever from the village. Then he turned to comfort his queen who was splashing tears on the bump on her arm. Ravi slowly walked back to his village. He went to his shop. No one was there. He searched for the old man who was asked for water. He was nowhere to be seen. He called out, Uncle, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Please do come. I will give you water. But there was no reply. Now he realized this was the same old man whom he met a year back. He remembered the people he had healed once out of kindness and compassion and how much they had blessed and loved him in return. He remembered their little acts of generosity, sparing him a few coins, a bundle of vegetables from their garden in return for the water. When did he become so selfish and greedy that he would neglect the people who had needed him the most? The old man had taken back his powers when he sensed Ravi had misused the gift. Never mind, Ravi smiled to himself. He would use the money he had received for the water to help bring a real doctor to the village. Someone who would help the people with his knowledge of medicines and diseases so that they need not wait for a magician to cure them of their illness. From that day onwards, Ravi filled his pitcher with ordinary water from the stream and carried it back carefully to his little store and waited for the old man. Maybe one day he would be back, but till then Ravi was determined to bring a real medicine man to his village. <sighs> Aji finished her story and looked around at the four little faces around her. Raghu was deep in thought. Aji smiled at him. Then the children shouted, Aji, tell one more story. Ha <laughs> ha, Aji said, too many stories a day are not good either. One laddu is very sweet, very delicious, but if you eat laddus all the time, it's no fun. Go and play outside. Tomorrow, I will tell you another story. With that, she got up and went to the kitchen to supervise the dinner. That's the end of the story. Okay, how do you like it? Are you feeling sleepy? Yes, I knew it. Then close your eyes and go to sleep. I will brush your face a little bit. You will feel very good. Bye-bye.